When we look up at the night sky, we often see streaks of light gliding across. These could be shooting stars or sometimes the sign of a spacecraft re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. This re-entry event, though lasting only a few brief minutes, is the result of decades of research and development in space technology. From the early days of the space race to the current era of space commercialization, humans have continuously sought safer and more efficient ways to bring astronauts and cargo back from orbit. In this journey, two designs have stood out, shaping our perception of space travel. NASA's iconic space shuttle and SpaceX's ambitious starship. Each vehicle represents an era, a vision, and a unique approach. Let's examine how each spacecraft faces the challenge of atmospheric reentry, thereby gaining a deeper understanding of the evolution of space technology over time. Launching a spacecraft into space is one thing, bringing it back is another. When an object enters the Earth's atmosphere, it experiences a few forces, including gravity and drag. Gravity will naturally pull an object back to Earth, but gravity alone would cause the object to fall dangerously fast. Luckily, Earth's atmosphere contains particles of air. As the object falls, it hits and rubs against these particles, creating friction. This friction causes the object to experience drag or air resistance, which slows down the object to a safer entry speed. This friction is a mixed blessing, however. Although it causes drag, it also causes intense heat. Specifically, the space shuttle had to endure extreme temperatures of around 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about 1,649 degrees Celsius, while the Starship faced slightly lower temperatures, approximately 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,430 Celsius. This highlights the pressure and stress that both spacecraft must withstand during reentry. To provide a more objective view of how these two types of vehicles re-enter Earth's atmosphere, we will compare them based on several significant criteria that greatly affect the re-entry process. First, let's discuss the design shapes of the Starship and the Space Shuttle. If the Space Shuttle is shaped like a space plane, the Starship is shaped like a giant steel bullet. Which of these designs do you think offers the advantage for re-entry? To be frank, a blunt body like the Space Shuttle with its underside facing downward creates a shockwave in front of the vehicle, keeping heat at a distance from the object. However, Starship goes beyond this concept. It combines the blunt body design with a cylindrical rounded shape, providing efficiency by distributing heat more evenly across its surface. This shape also allows for a larger surface area relative to its volume, which can potentially improve heat radiation into space. This design minimizes the number of special heat-resistant tiles needed, simplifying the manufacturing, installation, and quality control processes. The cylindrical shape also plays a crucial role in increasing the vehicle's drag coefficient. A high drag coefficient is advantageous during re-entry as it helps to slow down the spacecraft more effectively in the upper atmosphere. By reducing speed early on, Starship can distribute the heat load more evenly over a longer period, preventing thermal hot spots and decreasing the risk of damage to the spacecraft. This gradual deceleration is essential for maintaining structural integrity and ensuring the safety of any crew or cargo aboard. Along with their different designs, the Space Shuttle and Starship also have two different approaches and re-entry mechanisms. The Space Shuttle utilized its body and delta wings to generate lift, allowing it to stay in the upper atmosphere longer and bleed off speed more gradually. This slower reduction in speed was crucial to avoid overheating its delicate silica tile heat shield. As the shuttle descended, its wings and control surfaces enabled it to glide steeply towards the runway, making a horizontal landing much like an airplane. In contrast, Starship employs a high drag approach by presenting the broad side of the vehicle to the airflow during re-entry. This strategy aims to scrub off speed rapidly, minimizing the time spent at high velocities and temperatures. Instead of generating lift, Starship focuses on creating as much drag as possible to slow down quickly. The angle of attack, a crucial parameter in re-entry dynamics, highlights a stark difference between the two vehicles. While the Space Shuttle re-entered at a 40-degree angle of attack, the Starship re-entered at a more extreme 80-degree angle. The breakdown in the angle of attack is due to Starship being equipped with control surfaces known as alonerons, or flaps. Starship can adjust its direction to manage deceleration and heat dissipation effectively. 
This system stands in stark contrast to conventional winged re-entry vehicles. This substantial difference underlines Starship's unique approach, prioritizing rapid deceleration and thermal protection over the lift and gliding capabilities. When compared to other re-entry vehicles, Starship's design shines. For instance, ballistic missiles, which also undergo re-entry, use ablative heat shields to survive the extreme temperatures. Ablative shields work by sacrificing their outer layers, which vaporize and flake away, carrying heat with them. While effective, this method is not suitable for reusable spacecraft like Starship, as it requires the heat shield to be rebuilt after each use. Starship, on the other hand, relies on reusable thermal protection tiles that absorb and radiate heat without needing replacement, aligning with its goal of rapid reusability. And that's not new. The space shuttle also had a layer of heat shield tiles. However, it must be said that although the space shuttle achieved groundbreaking accomplishments, it still faced significant challenges with its thermal protection system. One of the most critical issues faced by the space shuttle was the risk of falling ice and insulation from the external tank. This debris could strike the shuttle's fragile thermal protection tiles at high speeds, potentially causing severe damage. This problem is not unique to the shuttle. It's a persistent challenge for most spacecraft, including Orion and even Starship. This vulnerability represents a potential Achilles heel for these vehicles. The integrity of the heat shield is paramount for safe reentry. If even a small section of the heat shield is compromised, it can allow superheated plasma to penetrate the vehicle's structural frame. This localized breach can escalate quickly, leading to a catastrophic failure of the entire spacecraft. Another issue with the shuttle's heat shield was the complexity of tile installation. The shuttle had a total of 32,000 tiles with two types, low temperature and high temperature, white and black. The irregular shapes of the shuttle's tiles meant that each one had to be custom made, complicating manufacturing and making quality control a labor-intensive process. In this regard, Starship has an advantage. The cylindrical shape of Starship allows the use of uniform tile shapes, greatly simplifying the manufacturing and installation process. Uniform tiles mean that quality control can be more easily automated, reducing the risk of human error and enhancing reliability. When compared to the Space Shuttle's thermal protection tiles, Starship's tiles represent a significant advancement in both durability and ease of maintenance. SpaceX's Starship employs a state-of-the-art thermal protection system designed for rapid reuse and high durability. The system relies on heat sink type thermal protection tiles, which are designed to absorb, withstand, and radiate the intense heat generated during re-entry. Unlike ablative shields that burn away and require replacement, these tiles are designed to endure multiple re-entries with minimal maintenance. The composition of Starship's tiles is a sophisticated blend of silicon and aluminum oxides, potentially enhanced with carbon and coated with black glazed borosilicate. This combination of materials offers several key advantages. Silicon and aluminum oxides provide excellent thermal resistance, with the tiles capable of withstanding temperatures of up to 1260 degrees Celsius. The black glazed borosilicate coating not only contributes to the tile's thermal properties, but also enhances their emissivity, allowing them to radiate heat more effectively. In terms of structure, these tiles are similar to hard foam, with approximately 90% of their volume being air and the remaining 10% solid silica. This lightweight, porous design contributes to their low thermal conductivity and high specific heat capacity, which are crucial for absorbing and dissipating heat without transferring it to the spacecraft's interior. The final factor we can mention to highlight the difference in the re-entry process of the two vehicles is the materials used in spacecraft construction. This is indeed crucial for ensuring safety during re-entry and the structural integrity of the spacecraft. SpaceX's choice of stainless steel for Starship offers several significant advantages over aluminum, particularly in heat resistance and heat radiation. Stainless steel outperforms aluminum in terms of heat resistance. Aluminum, which was used in the space shuttle's airframe, has a melting point of around 660 degrees Celsius and begins to lose structural strength at temperatures as low as 250 degrees Celsius. This limitation posed a substantial risk during re-entry, as any damage to the thermal protection tiles could expose the aluminum frame to potentially catastrophic heating. In contrast, stainless steel 
has a much higher melting point, around 1450 degrees Celsius, and retains its structural integrity at significantly higher temperatures. This makes stainless steel a more robust and reliable choice for withstanding the extreme conditions of atmospheric reentry. Another advantage of stainless steel is its superior ability to radiate heat effectively at high temperature. The Stefan Boltzmann law states that power radiated by a black body increases with the fourth power of its temperature. This means that as the temperature of a material rises, its ability to radiate heat away increases dramatically. Stainless steel, when heated to high temperatures, can radiate heat much more efficiently than aluminum. At its melting point, stainless steel can radiate heat 22 times faster than aluminum at its melting point. This efficient radiation helps to dissipate the intense heat generated during reentry, preventing excessive thermal buildup on the spacecraft's surface. Despite the advantages of stainless steel, certain areas of Starship, such as its control surfaces, require even more robust thermal protection. The control surfaces, which include the flaps and other aerodynamic elements used to manage the vehicle's descent, encounter some of the highest thermal loads during reentry. To protect these critical components, SpaceX uses specifically reinforced carbon carbon RCC tiles. RCC is a composite material known for its exceptional thermal properties. It can withstand temperatures well above those tolerable by standard thermal protection tiles, making it ideal for areas subjected to extreme heat and aerodynamic stress. Reinforced carbon-carbon tiles were also used on the space shuttle, primarily on its nose cone and the leading edges of its wings. These tiles are heavier than the standard silica tiles but offer unparalleled thermal resistance. For Starship, the use of RCC tiles on the control surfaces ensures that these components remain protected and functional throughout the re-entry process, even under the most severe thermal conditions. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.